This is Room in the Trees, a podcast about living a creative life. Room in the Trees is hosted by Sabrina Ward-Harrison and me, Trent Reynolds. Show notes including pictures, links, video, and more for every episode can be found at roominthetrees.com. If you like this podcast, please consider showing your support. You can become a subscribing patron at patreon.com forward slash room. And now here's this week's episode. Hi. 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 Here we are on a Tuesday afternoon. It's been a while since we've recorded on Tuesday, hasn't it? It has. It feels like so in the schedule kind of. Do you feel like you're you're more scheduled, more like do you have a calendar? Do you do you have a <laughs> I do write things down and is it an electric calendar or no, is it a physical it's a, calendar? It's a paper one that's like a big date book. Mm -hmm. But it's set for, you know, people that have back to back to back all day long and I don't really have it like quite like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I do have a I do have a calendar and then Sean got me a big one. I need I just need the visual. I need to see the whole month really big and there's some mm -hmm. uh tool store that gives away these really big calendars that I saw at his house. I thought I want one of those. So uh, well, what about you with your calendar? What's your tracking? Well, you know, like for a long time I found the easiest and and just like the least stressful was to print out a weekly calendar just from the mm. calendar application on my, on my laptop. I tried to do it on computer, but then I just never could be consistent with it. And I think like you, I really liked the visual and I like to be able to underline and put in bold and put like a little cloud around something ways to kind of communicate visually. Yeah. But then, uh, then when it, like became like both Laura and I and trying to merge our schedules and like after a, after a couple of years of just like us both missing big events on each other's calendars, you know, yeah, we just we just had to force ourselves to to use the electronic calendar. So we use Fantastical, a combination of Fantastical and then just the the Mac OS calendar. Oh, so what's what's Fantastical? So, uh, fantastic how I use it on my phone. It's just a lot. The, the user interface is just a lot cleaner and simpler yeah. than the calendar app on, on, uh, that just comes with the phone. Right. I just prefer it, but I do miss. So for, for probably, it must've been years. I tried every calendar app that came along, hoping that I could find something like, like more like paper where I could annotate, where yeah. I could like draw on it or do something like add images because i wanted to be able to like be able to look at it and have more visual indication and uh busy cal had the ability to add like little icons and and stuff but it was kind of clunky anyway i would love to have a calendar app that felt more like the old analog calendar but yeah never, and this whole i know and i think there's continually people are trying to figure out ways to organize because I'm always thinking, how can I visually, I need to visually see, like, as I'm thinking about a project that's maybe 90 days out, how can I visually friggin' see the whole thing and see the steps and break stuff down into like, okay, this is this week's goal. And I like to cross things off also. Like, I don't want to just, I like the feeling like done, this has happened, this is done. Yeah. You know? yeah there's something about, uh, yeah, like having a, something in the real world. I don't know. I guess this is a recurring theme on the podcast is, you know, like just the physicality of things, importance of like understanding things, not just in your mind conceptually or like as right. a thought, but finding ways to interact with information in the real world, and like crossing things off, underlining, creating like uh, colors. And I don't know. I think, th I think there's something just uh, how, uh, how I process like how I understand even what I'm doing day to day, you know, it, it helps me to have some kind of visualization of that. Do you schedule an art making time? No, I don't know. As we have this conversation, I'm realizing how much of what I struggle with is, is related to my struggle in, in like <laughs> organizing my time, you know, my, uh, and, and making borders around uh, the things that, you know, that, that matter the most because it can so easily just get chopped up into unusable pieces. So that's, it's a hard thing to do. And I think like people that are really productive and effective 
are really good. I think maybe this is just, you know, an assumption I make, but um, are really good with calendaring and planning and organizing, you know, how they use their time. And I agree. And I think that there's something about when you just stick for me that I need to kind of implement a bit more is like just sticking with the friggin' plan. Like just mm-hmm. like say we were going to like, for example, I'm trying to begin to start doing things like Facebook live and it's very easy to go. I don't feel up for it today. I don't feel like I'm, I'm on enough. I can be mm-hmm. like, what if I just had to? And you know, what if we had to record a podcast episode, like just sort of, or like art wise, like, Oh, I don't feel like I'm in that zone yet. And I was saying mm-hmm. to my students, like, what if, you know, we just have to sort of get place, get the stage set and just start in so that whether we want to or not, just, yeah. and then you kind of get there, and you, you act until it act until it's real. Yeah, yeah, I think there's something to that. Uh, Stephen Prescott in The War of Art talks a lot about that, about how, you know, the difference between when you go pro is the terminology he uses. Yeah. But it's like, you know, you don't have to wait till you're in the mood. You just have to show up on time and do it every day, you know, or you on schedule. And the process, that's a process of training. I think you kind of train yourself to, to um, get into that habit. I, I don't know. And and creative creativity it seems like would would follow that I, I, it brings its own kind of creativity i think the consistency and re, uh, repetition of of having that habit like these past few days i've been feeling uh, like the kids are sleeping better now they're all in the oh. same room uh like we have a fairly um predictable like bedtime at seven o'clock and everybody's up you know by six six thirty and um Oh, wow. And just that abil- ability to kind of predict that in that, that system and nobody's here until last night, the pattern was broken last night. So I kind of yeah. say that hesitantly, but uh, that has just opened up all sorts of like, it, it's created hope, I guess, you know, it's, and it creates oh. this, this space, you know, for like just bandwidth, mental bandwidth of being able right. to say like, now I can see how there's a, a new possible, or now that it's possible to do all this stuff that just felt so impossible before. So, you know, when we're talking about scheduling and stuff like that, and like recently it's just, I've felt, been feeling a lot more hopeful about, you know, pulling out of this like feeling of just being blown out, you know, having, having no, no extra space for anything other than just survival, you know? Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, it's been it's been a really good feeling this past uh, probably you know week or two. So much hats off to Laura for all that. She's so she's an incredible she is. mother. She is. You're an incredible dad, and she's an incredible mom. Yeah, that's that's one of the hardest things about being in a you know two bedroom apartment with with four kids is yeah. Like, there is no space, and like my my sacred space is is the bathroom in the morning, you know, I've got the shower running. So there's kind of white noise. Yeah. Right. And I'm by myself and nobody else is awake. But recently my kids have been even taking that from me. Like (laughs) Zoe, our youngest, our baby, she'll start just pushing things under the door, like magazine pages, anything she can pull off the side, like the bedside table. And then the other day she started feeding a, like a, a vacuum cord underneath the door. <laughs> like they that just is cannot, hilarious. They cannot leave me, you know, my little private space or they stick their fingers on just like wiggling underneath the door. Anyway. <laughs> oh my God. Well, that might be a, a place to, to, or a conversation worth having. And that is like, uh, especially now when we've got this permanent record online of, of our life, right? Like it can become difficult to make a separation and, and make a, become a new person or kind of expand yourself or leave uh, the last chapter behind and move on to something new. Cause there's always this kind of record that is accessible by you and in any, anybody else. Right. Right. And I think for you, you've probably experienced this in your life more than more than most. I mean, you have you have a book and lots of people love that book and start to identify with it and becomes like part of their an important part of their formative years. 
and that's always going to be attached to you, right? So how do you five of them too? <laughs> right, I know exactly, and and maybe that's yeah. maybe that's the way that you were able to do it is like is by writing another book, you were able to kind of say this is the end of that part of my life, and I'm this is who I am now, right? But I I think it's uh, it's challenging. I feel that like with my artwork as it's gone more abstract, mm. uh, like like. It's been a difficult, a kind of a mind, um, you know, a tough state of mind change to make that, you know, it, even like, I feel like a cheater or a traitor, like, like I'm not really an abstract artist, you know, I, I, for years and years and years, I did very representational stuff, you know? Right. So it's just like, A, giving myself permission, you know, to be something new that I haven't been before. And not feeling like, you know, I'm just, you know, there's, there's kind of a weight of legitimacy that comes with doing something for many years. And when you let right. go of that, it, you feel a little bit like you're not on solid ground because it's new territory for you. And it doesn't have the weight of like experience and history. Right. Does and that make sense? Yet, yeah. Yet we're so drawn in life to evolve and change and grow and try and explore um, and become, you know, more and more dimensional as people. Um, but there are serious forces at play, both, yeah. I think, friends, family, yeah. uh, jobs, you know, or identities as, you know, positions within jobs. There's so many things at play that try to force us back into the expected role that we've always played, you know, not right. allowing us to, to try new things or to step away from an identity that, you know, that, that we've already had. I felt that especially strongly. I, I spent two years in the, in the Philippines and I had this like life changing experience. Uh, and for the first time felt like I had kind of, uh, understood who I was, you know, in a very real way yeah. because I was so distant from my family, from my friends, from everything I knew. Like it was this moment where I was able to see myself independent of all that history and all that, you know, all I had been before, you know? Right. And then I remember coming home and then, you know, friends and family are you know, basically say like, how was your trip? And it was like, I'd been gone for five days, you know, when it had right. been this, right. so right. such an impactful, like mind opening. Yeah. And they just start treating me like they've always treated me, you know, and, and, and it's so hard to not just slide right back into that, those familiar modes of behavior and communication. And it's frustrating because you feel like, wait a second, I, I know I'm not this person. I know I can be, you know, and I think that's probably the case with, you know, and I was thinking of uh, my friend, uh, Chris D'Elia, we were friends yes. in high school I, we were, I don't know. I think we were more than just acquaintances. We definitely yeah. hung out and we have yeah. lots of mutual, uh, mutual friends. We weren't super like super tight buddies, you know, friends, friends forever type deal. But, um, then he started, you know, getting more attention with his stand up and then TV and movies and stuff like that. So, um, but I imagine people that get that kind of celebrity and that kind of recognition, it's, it's probably not too dissimilar from going to a completely different country and having this huge transformation, you know, and be becoming just having this different side of them expressed and developed and just not feeling like they know how to come back and be that person they were before that experience. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Like, I don't, I don't and know. And people don't, well, and people don't really let them because they're, they're looked at differently and they're, they can't control exactly. That. Yep, yeah. and then you know this. They're trying to perpetuate the success, and and they're it's this kind of self reinforcing uh, process where they can't break out of that mold that they've created for themselves and that people want them to stay in. I don't know. I think that's like that at that macro scale, that large scale process. I think happens on a much smaller scale, just day to day. You know, like there's so many ways that we get ourselves into ruts and just uh you know there's so many good excuses to to not move or change or evolve or let go of you know whatever weight is holding us down 
And I think when it comes to artwork, art making, that can be something where, um, yeah, the vulnerability of letting things be different and like going, well, I always used to always collage with this stuff or I always used to paint with this kind of brush. And mm -hmm. I admire that so much about your creative evolution has been to just to be that vulnerable side of exploration of like, I, you know, cause mm -hmm. you're really, really, really good at, at representational, beautiful work. And then, um, which like I, for one, am entirely inept at to, to say, you know, I'm going to explore this other, this is kind of what is exciting in a new territory. I wonder if you've seen this in your workshops. In fact, I, I imagine you have, but it's like where you see somebody and you can imagine the internal dialogue. Like I'm not somebody who does this. I'm not somebody who takes right. a, right. a nasty paintbrush, you know, that is slobbery and, and throws it at it, at the paper. You know, I'm not that person, but then you see them do that. And it's like this, this, they break through this, you know, barrier that was entirely fictional, that was entirely of their own making. And it's like this, you know, this world of possibility opens up, you know, I, I guess that's, that's the, the kind of thing that just is the most uh, wonderful thing to see as a, as a teacher, you know, is to be able to see when somebody realizes that this whole thing is there that, that can be them if they choose it, you know, that you know, they have this potential to become this new thing. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking in very kind of like woo -woo no. language, but, but no. it is such a, you know, so, so exciting to see somebody, you know, realize that what they really desire is right there. You know, it's just, it was a decision away. It was like, no, I'm not going to organize everything to death and I'm going to take this pencil and break it in half. Like I could have done that any day I chose, Right. but that little bit of like just breaking a pattern or breaking, I don't know. I'm saying the same thing over and over again, but anyway, I, the original, <laughs> my intention there was to ask you a question is like, how does that, does a similar experience happen to you in your workshops? And I guess that's kind of a rhetorical question because I think it obviously. Oh, it's does. my favorite part. It's like, let me yeah. free you. Let me free you. You know, like loving to see. I think so many people come to my workshops who are really wanting that liberation of, of setting, like setting themselves free. And so my whole calling is, is in that area of, of helping that facilitate that happening there's such gratification in seeing that those little shifts happening they're really small like someone will come in and say i i don't want to get paint on and i want to use gloves and mm -hmm. yes of course there's like oh you shouldn't use certain get paint on your hands but like come on also there's a part that's like the way kids you know if you're working with temper paint and you've got you know you've got temper paint on your hands like it's okay like kids played with play with paint on their hands so, but seeing their, them like not having their gloves on, like letting them take their gloves off midway through and just get their hands covered in paint and just seeing their faces light up and then they're suddenly barefoot in the paint and they're just, <laughs> I see this sort of deep breath happen and their shoulders kind of drop down and I can just picture it in my mind, different times, different people have had those moments, you know, in their own, in their own way. Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> And I feel it for myself, even as a teacher, there's a part that wants to think I have to kind of, I want to teach it well. I want to teach it and teach them everything. And then there's like mm -hmm. when I can get into my flow and I'm just shooting from the hip and um, in my element and mm -hmm. being my weird self and dancing a little bit, um, it, I, I there's there's such a, there's a euphoria that can hit right then that. I love, but For it, sure. but it comes by way of being vulnerable and not knowing where it's going to go, definitely how it's going to get there and what it's going to look like. Well, there's this there's this wonderful virtuous cycle that happens. Like when somebody hits that point, that energy is is reflected back on you. And I think the excitement that that brings, or the the kind of empowerment that brings to you as a teacher, then allows you to to open up and and achieve a level of vulnerability or transcendence or like whatever word you want to use, but it's just this energy goes back and forth. I think that's one of the most powerful things about teaching is that mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you know, both student and teacher are 
are lifted. That is one of the things that I feel like I've had from the start. I feel like that's one of the things that I've, I'm here to learn from you because I feel like it's something that you do so well. It's something that I admire about you and I, and I, something that seems, I, I don't, I'm not going to say that you didn't work hard to, to get to that level, but it's something like you said, is I feel like it's, it's what you're here to do, you know? And right. I, I don't know. I, I think you have a certain, I don't know, there's something about your nature that is especially suited to that. I, I feel like that is part of the reason that I'm part of this conversation mm. is to, is to learn that from you. So mm. I appreciate you. Yeah. Well, and it, it's as I think about this technology change, technology grows and changes, and I more and more people are, you know, say teaching uh, something on Facebook Live or putting themselves into a situation where they're, you know, teaching publicly to people that aren't necessarily, you know, students that have signed up for a class, but you're just offering something out there. Um, and I, you know, I've been wanting, I've been wanting to since last month. I wanted to do this called it's like spilling spilling open stories of just telling it page by page of the book, like this backstory of how I created the piece, the page, and maybe a little anecdote. Cause I remember making each one of them mm-hmm. and I kind of overthink it and I think, okay, well I'll film it first and then edit that and I'll transcribe it and I'll make it an Instagram post. I'm like, Oh my gosh. You know, and then I think, well, that's, there's not enough on about that page that I can explain and blah, 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 blah. And I think mm-hmm. just, so then I think of the, some new plan. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to open the book and whatever page that is, I'm just going to tell something about that page. So I think that mm-hmm. might be the way to go. But it is when you teach in a fluid way of not necessarily having like, this is the exact exactly what I'm going to talk about. This is a demo I'm going to do or something. It's, it's sometimes, and I just have to get used to it. It's just stepping into like, I don't know how it's going to go. Don't know what I'm going to exactly talk about, but I got to just do it because Mm -hmm. ultimately at the end, I feel good. I feel great that I did. Oh, but I can just talk myself right out of it so easily. Yeah. Even though all the people that are watching are lovely, great people for the most part, I I imagine. I wonder if there's not a connection to this and what we were talking at the beginning with calendars, though, mm. is that I think there's a tension between um, this this desire to organize and create uh, a container of time. <laughs> as much yeah. as I love containers, that is that is kind of contrary to creative process. You know, like you can't force something. You know, like like you, you can't plan it it's just gotta happen right like to a certain degree uh, creativity can't be scheduled as much as i do think you know just like you're saying you you do need to create habits of showing up and and working uh you know it's like i feel like there's this tension between wanting to create order but then the natural kind of process of be involved in creativity of just letting it happen you know does that make sense? Yeah, I agree. I agree. And also, though, when it comes to, to like, I the 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 balance between thinking about it and thinking, God, I I really want to do this, and then the feeling of having it just done and just doing it. Mm-hmm. I think that like I could have thought out liberate last year and the, as I created it and thought, Oh, I could should sp- I could spend another year working on it or something. And it's like, you gotta just put it out there. You gotta right, just right, start right, teaching. Right. So. Well, that's that why yeah, the calendar like is really efficient, effective. Yeah. I, th- I think you're absolutely right. I, I wonder though, if it's like, Oh goodness. I think there's something so important in that, you know, when you're in the moment of, of, of being creative, like whether it's scheduled or not scheduled, you're like, you're there, right? Right. The thought of then trying to contain that, you know, to try to plan that or like, okay, I'm going to do this again on Tuesday at four o'clock. Like there's something just, I, I believe that that kind of fights between those two things. Yes. And I think, uh, and so I'm just saying like, I innately like, part of the joy of the process is that spontaneity. And I think as creatives, like we kind of fight to have to 
you know, I guess be grown up about it and put it on the calendar. Yeah, but I <laughs> we, I know we have to. It's the grown up part. Yeah, like we have to schedule time to be maybe spontaneous. Like if I know right that I have to, you know, like every time I taught live last year, I was super nervous and thinking. I can't, I can't, I can't, but then I'm doing it and I'm doing it. And afterwards I'm like high-fiving Megan. Like we did it. It was awesome. And I feel great that I did, but only because it was scheduled and people were going to be there waiting for me to jump online and, and be there. And I was always so glad I was, I mean, Mm -hmm. obviously I was going to be there, but like in my introverted part that thought I can't do it. It It's like afterwards it felt really good that I did. So yeah. Um, there is power, power and structure, power and planning yes, and, power and structure and, and committing and fulfilling those commitments. I think if you were to see me, if you were to ha- want to see me teach, what would you like to see if you were to, um, if I was to do a demo about something, is there something you picture? What I, what I've, I feel like I've drawn or been, um, most interested in over the years of our conversations is hearing about, the stories of like the time when you were in that, uh, in, in, I think it was Manhattan or Brooklyn or somewhere on the, on like a rooftop and you brought everybody, it was this like yeah. <laughs> little apartment and like those moments of spontaneity and, yeah. um, and how you were able to turn that into something that was invigorating and, uh, and freeing for the people that were involved. Oh, yeah. There are so many different examples of that and so many different stories that have been told over the course of our conversation that, um, I think I would, I would like to have kind of like the, you know, when, when we did um, decisive action is, mm-hmm. you know, I guess more than a, a video that I would like to see of you demonstrating, I would just like to be there a fly on the wall or a participant, you know, a passive participant uh, when you have one of those moments where it's just like, you know, we're here and this is happening, you know, and we're going to. Interesting. Because I filmed, I document so much with video, so I have all mm. this, all this um, film footage of it that I'm here. I should sometimes, I like, it pulled out a little bit last year to transfer, and it was just hilarious, like the adventures I have uh, filmed, and maybe I would love one day to make a documentary or some <laughs> series of stories. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure there's just a mind. Of, of- yeah stuff that you could put together i don't know that that might be an interesting series of short uh short videos that you could do it yeah. didn't necessarily have to be one long long piece right uh, they're they random to see them. they are i've they're seen uh, seen blips yeah dirty videos no, it's just like the camera was always dirty and there's all, you know, but that made it cool. Yeah. So uh, what's on the calendar for this week? What's on the calendar? <laughs> Let me look at it. Um, well, can I, can I ask you what brand of uh, what the brand name is on the calendar? Yes. What's, what store did this come from? My therapist had, and I, I got the one she had. <laughs> It is. Oh, I thought this was the one Sean gave you. Is this not the? Oh, that one. Yes. Let me go. This one, this one, the one I have is the 2019, 2020 academic essential daily planner. Academic essential daily planner. Yes. Let me go Mm. grab the other, the other one. Show you what, tell you what it is. It is the AFS advanced fastening supply incorporated. Yes. I'm going to look that up right now. Advanced fastening supply. F A S T E N I N G. Fastening supply. Supply Incorporated. Oh, this is such a place that I would love to go. Love to go. Yeah, I love, well, I love hardware stores. Yeah, what does it show? It shows all all sorts of fasteners <laughs> 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 by category: adhesive, sealants, caulk, foam. Oh yes, grinding, cutting, drilling, <laughs> letter <laughs> scuttle. I love it all. That makes me happy. You've got a calendar, an AFS calendar. 
Well, you're set. Yeah, I am. You are I'm... set. <laughs> well, cool. You say you got, you got a busy week ahead? Yeah, I'm going to uh... schedule some... I'm going to schedule some painting time. Awesome. Are you yeah, getting Are you, you getting time to get in the studio? Are you making time for studio stuff? I'm not. not but I just, moved, I just moved my work table out to my living room over the lake. So I, utilize, I had my studio in the back of the back. And now I have, I'm just going to just take over the, the lake room. Awesome. Um, what about you? Well, I've been, I lasered, uh, some of the paintings. I'm kind of excited about it. Actually, I'll have to send you a picture. Maybe a post in the show notes if I remember, but I am actually, uh, looking at, I've, I've been dabbling with this program on, on the iPad and I'm not, I know you're not you're, uh, doing too much on the iPad, but the program is called Forger, F-O-R-G-E-R. Mm-hmm. It's a sculpting app, which is just fantastic. I used it, uh, couple of years ago and it's gotten so much better um but if you're into digital sculpting check out forger oh. and uh and then uh, so i finished a little uh sculpture today it's just a little uh, little face that i did and i'm going to print it out on the 3d printer tomorrow and paint it something i've done uh, some i've done something similar before but this is the first time that i've done it from the ipad to the 3d printing so So I'm kind of dabbling with that. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week. Please help us grow our audience by rating us or writing a review on iTunes. To do that, you can use the link roominthetrees.com forward slash iTunes. You can follow us on Instagram at Sabrina Ward Harrison and at Trent Reynolds Art. And check out the show notes at roominthetrees.com where you can also get in touch if you have any ideas you'd like to share. Uh, Rate us on iTunes and share Room in the Trees with a friend. With a friend. With a friend.